Hello, welcome to OLT 322 African American Literature Lecture 9 on Ralph Ellison and Invisible Man. My name is Warren Reed. Hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to talk about The Invisible Man, the novel uh, in general, and specifically invisibility and identity. Like Native Son, the novel by Richard Wright, which we just studied, Invisible Man takes place during the Depression years. Invisible Man continues some themes started by Native Son, such as the social invisibility of blacks, the blindness of whites to the humanity of blacks, and also these mass movements such as communism and uh, nationalism. Well, in the novel Invisible Man, it's the brotherhood. The novel also illustrates other aspects of the black experience in America to that time, such as the evictions from housing, black colleges, which were on the rise, and also black nationalism, such as Marcus Garvey. And in the novel, it's Rass, who represents the Marcus Garvey figure. In Native Son, the search for identity takes place in relation to society. One forms one's identity in relationship and also in opposition to society. Whereas in Visible Man, identity is an individual problem, which is resolved through self-knowledge and an understanding of history. Geographical and social mobility are also shown in Invisible Man, as the Invisible Man moves from where he's going to school in the south up to the north, uh, from being, and he moves from being a student to a factory worker, to being a hospital patient, subject for experiment, a political activist, and finally, a hermit. The theme of invisibility, of course, Invisible Man is all about invisibility. In the novel, it is society which imposes this invisibility by its unwillingness to see a person's individuality. The novel, in the prologue of the novel, we see a mention of outer eyes and inner eyes. And these outer eyes are what most people see with, and they're, they use prejudice and preconceived ideas and ha habitual methods and modes of seeing and, and identifying, looking at people without actually seeing them. The inner eyes are free of prejudice, and those are the ones we need to see people with. We see each person's individuality, his individual, her individual humanity. But invisibility is also a failure to recognize one's own humanity and to assert it. It's a kind of surrender to the oppression of the, of the group at large. It's a kind of resignation and acceptance of one's social condition. The social blindness of African Americans is shown in the way the Invisible Man does not see the veterans as part of his own experience as a black person in the golden day. In fact, the veterans, they represent the sum of black experience because they represent all levels of society from the lower classes to the intellectuals or doctors, artists, and so on. Also, they are veterans of World War I. And we've seen before that those veterans, they sacrificed themselves, they risked their lives fighting for white people. They came back with a better sense of themselves and their own self-worth. But because their achievements are not seen by whites, they're just dismissed, they're not important. And in fact, the whites don't even recognize anything about them except that they're black, so they make them also invisible by that prejudice. So you see, invisibility isn't just like vanishing cream. No, you could be standing right there, people look at you, they don't even see you. Many people have had that experience, I'm sure. Or they judge you based on something about you. Next, I want to talk about the theme of identity. In the novel, lack of identity is a result of invisibility. And this invisibility and lack of identity is caused, as usual in this course, by the oppression of whites and also which is interesting and new in this novel, the surrender of blacks to that oppression. Identity is at once a struggle for social equality, and it's also a process of self-discovery. It's shown, invisibility is shown in the novel as a problem for all humanity, and this creates common ground for blacks and whites to unite. And I think everybody, no matter what color, has at one point felt invisible Think about it, I'm sure you have. The novel also attempts to situate 
black identity on the historical plane as Langston Hughes and others of the Harlem Renaissance did by connecting to the past through the acts of the soldiers in World War I and on back to the early history of Africa, Ethiopia, Egypt, and so on. In, at the outset, Invisible Man thinks he, will, he can prove himself by his achievements. By doing great things, people will take notice of him, but he finds that not the case. He runs from one episode to the next, trying to find himself amongst others. He tries to please whites, but that doesn't work. He tries to be a nationalist, but that doesn't work either. Invisible Man's grandfather gave him advice before he died about how to be successful. But it's ironic because that strategy didn't work for him, so how could it work for somebody else? And on top of it, that strategy is based on hiding your identity. When Invisible Man realizes he isn't anything at all that can be described after all these attempts, he goes underground with a thousand lights in order to find himself, to light up the darkness. He moves around a lot in the novel, only to learn that moving around, to being, being like sheep, being part of the crowd, following others will not help him. He must find and assert his humanity, his identity, on his own, through his own acts. Notice that's a trend. You have to do something. Things don't just get handed to you, except if you wait for handouts, it's going to be invisibility. So you have to do something. This then is another swing in the pendulum of the course's theme about how African-American writers are seeking to construct, to reconstruct an identity for African-Americans. We saw how Fre Frederick Douglass's awakening began with, by standing up, an act of resistance, fighting with Covey. And from then on, he continued his education and expanded his mind and his awareness through literacy. Note, reading is good for you. In Native Son, we see another definition through violence, but which is aimed at society, a definition through an interaction with society. A defin you define yourself through the way you interact with society. But in Invisible Man, we see that identity is more than the social identity. In fact, social identity can leave you with no identity. You can be part of the crowd again. You're a sheep, but you're invisible. Identity then, according to the novel, is something we must construct and assert ourselves. Note that it is not enough just to construct it. You could construct it, and but still no one will know. You will still be invisible. You must assert it. You must be who you are and show who you are. Now, this is Warren Reed showing you who I am. I'm a guy who hides in the hole to talk about the search for identity. So there we have it. Those are the main points of this lecture. It was quite, it's quite a difficult chapter, I know. Hopefully this has helped. Uh, remember, if you don't understand, assert yourself and email me. I can help you. Um, and then don't be a face in the crowd. Don't be sheep. Find your identity. Assert your humanity. Here's me saying goodbye to you guys. Until the next time. Best of luck.